What's going on YouTube? So Toyota makes a lot of versions of the Corolla. Uh, however, what we have with us today is a version we've not sampled yet. This is the 2021 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. This thing gets 52 miles per gallon combined and stickers under $25,000. So is it a better buy than Prius or Honda Insight? Let's go ahead and find out. Now before we begin here, we wanted to take a second to talk to you guys about a product we've been enjoying and we think you will also enjoy, the Exter Parliament Smart Wallet. So there are several things that make this a smart wallet. First it is designed to make accessing your cards as easy as possible with a special ejection mechanism that raises them up with just the press of a button. But perhaps an even more useful feature is the ability to track your wallet anywhere in the world thanks to a thin solar charge tracker. You can locate it on a map, or you can also call it for all those times you lose it under the seat of your car. If you want to learn more or purchase an extra Parliament wallet yourself, we provided a link in the description, along with a special discount code for everyone watching this video. So with this Corolla Hybrid, I wanna start off by talking about the number one most important thing, and that's the fact that the hybrid Corolla is only available in the LE trim level. So that means all the other trims that you can get on the gas powered model, uh, you're just gonna have to stick with the LE for this hybrid. Now with that being said, uh, you do have that typical Corolla design. They haven't really changed much for hybrid duty. So you still have the large lower grill, the smaller upper grill, and you have blue badging here on the hybrid. Uh, one of the nice things I appreciate that they carried over even to the LE hybrid is the premium LED headlights. These are fully LED, and you have the th uh, three daytime running lights, which look really cool, and even the turn signal is LED as well. Now, of course, since it is just the LED trim level, what you see is what you get. So this is the only wheel option available. It is a 15-inch alloy. It's actually an alloy wheel, but you do have the color contrast hubcaps fit over top of it. Coming up from that, we have our hybrid branding. Uh, we also have body-colored mirrors. They are heated. Um, and then you can option on blind spot monitoring for an extra $500. Now here at the rear design of the Corolla Hybrid, you're not gonna have a ton of stuff going on since this is going to be LE trim level only, so no spoilers or anything for the hybrid model. That said, uh, you do still have the same partially LED tail lights from the regular Corolla, so the brake light itself is going to be LED. And then across the back, we have this black trim going through. And then we also have some hybrid branding and then down here on the bottom right corner, we do also have an exposed exhaust pipe. Now this Corolla Hybrid is gonna to continue to lead the way when it comes to standard safety equipment. Since Toyota does throw in their Safety Sense system, and it's actually the more advanced 2.0 system on this hybrid model. That means you're gonna have low light pedestrian detection as well as cyclist detection, in addition to all of your other advanced systems like adaptive cruise control. So as you can see, the hybrid doesn't change much besides for some branding on the outside, but now let's go ahead and hop on the inside and see if they change anything in there. So right off the bat here, you will notice one difference from the gas-powered LE model, and that's that you have standard smart entry here with the Corolla hybrid. Now those give you this typical Toyota fob, as well as the ability to just grab the handle and go straight into the vehicle. And taking a first peek inside of this cabin, even though it is just the LE model, I definitely think it has a very nice and upscale design, especially here in this Moonstone color scheme. Now, if you don't like this light color, you can also get a full black cloth option as well. Now turning over here to your door trim, you will see those same materials reflected up here. So we have a cloth that goes across the armrest portion, and this top part is the same color, but it is hard touch plastic. Down below here, you will find that all four of your windows are one touch auto up and down. And then checking out these seats themselves, this will be the six way manual adjusting seat, which is standard across all the hybrids. 
And like I was already mentioning, this is a cloth seat. Um, and here with the Moonstone color option, we have the contrast look, which I really, really like. I think it looks quite upscale for a cloth seat, and they are comfortable to set in as well. Now, just like every Corolla of this new generation, materials in here are quite nice for this class of vehicle. So across your upper dashboard, this is all going to be a soft touch plastic with a nice graining. Uh, dropping down here, this is also a soft touch plastic that runs all through here. Uh, but you will notice you lose the stitching detail that the higher end gas models have, uh, since this is just the LE trim level. And then down below, you have a mixture of some hard touch plastics, again, uh, just lacking the stitching detail, but everything does fit together very nice. Now standard on the hybrid model is push button start. And of course, since this is a hybrid model, you won't necessarily hear the gas engine start up. Now right away, one of the things you'll notice with this hybrid model is that we have the premium gauge cluster from the higher end gas powered models uh, here on the LE hybrid. So that's definitely a nice touch. This is a seven inch display um, and it is reconfigurable and you can cycle through a lot of different kinds of information, including for your safety systems. Now coming back to the steering wheel, uh, you do not have the leather option. So this is a urethane steering wheel. And of course, it is manual tilt and telescoping. Let's go ahead and talk about interior storage. So starting out with our center console here, uh, this is not going to be super large. Of course, we don't expect it to be large in a vehicle of this size, uh, but we do have a felt lining down at the bottom, uh, a charging USB port, as well as a 12 volt outlet. Now, as far as our big stack of coupons, don't think these are gonna fit too well. If we fold them in half, it looks like they're still going to stick up a little bit too much for us to shut the lid, so you're going to have to find a better place to stick them, like in the glove box. Now up in front of that, we've got two cup holders, and then we have another really large storage area up here with a, a grippy rubber lining, as well as another USB port. Now moving on to the shifter, we just have the traditional shifter, so you can pull back for drive, uh, you will notice there's actually a B mode, and what that does is maximize your brake regeneration. Of course, there is not going to be any manual shifting or anything like that. And then when we head up into reverse, you will find the standard backup camera. Uh, there is not any active trajectory or parking sensors as equipped. Now, I do want to point out one change, though, and that's the fact that if you choose the optional blind spot monitoring system for $500, you will now have a rear cross traffic alert uh, packaged with that for 2021. That is a new change this year. Then when you go into park, your electronic parking brake will automatically deploy and you have a brake hold as well. All right, so let's head on up the dashboard here. Uh, what you have is a single zone automatic climate control setup, which is pretty nice for an LE trim level. Um, as you can see, it does adjust automatically, but you have your fan speeds and all your other buttons located physically right here. One thing you will not get, though, is heated seats on the LE Hybrid. All right, and now let's go ahead and sample the six-speaker audio system. Overall sound quality is decent, but if you want a more advanced sound system, you're not going to be able to get it with the hybrid Corolla. You'll have to upgrade to a higher end gas model. All right, so let's go ahead and check out this standard eight inch display. Uh, you heard me right. It's an eight inch display as standard equipment, and it has some updates for 2021. The big update is that you now have Android Auto on board. Uh, previously, you just had Apple CarPlay, so now you have both on board. That is important because you cannot get an integrated navigation system. 
Um, but otherwise, uh, everything else here is basically your typical Intune 3.0 system, so it's pretty easy to use. Now jumping on up here, we do have a manual dimming mirror. Up top we have some lighting. And then up on the roof here, you will notice there is no moon roof, and that is because one is not available here on the LE Hybrid. All right, so now I'm in the rear seats of this Corolla Hybrid, and as you would expect, this is a basic vehicle in its lowest trim level, so you're not gonna have a ton of features back here, but the space is really, really good for this Corolla Hybrid. You're gonna come in at 41.4 inches of rear legroom and 37 inches of rear headroom, which places it on par with the Civic and some of the largest offerings in the class. And behind Drew's seating position, I have about six to seven inches of rear legroom. My feet can slide up underneath the seat. So this is certainly a very comfortable place for you and all of your family and really uncharacteristically uh, large. Now, as far as your features, we don't have vents in the middle as you would expect. There's this little storage compartment though. However, I am pleasantly surprised that we have an armrest with cup holders inside. However, my one big complaint for this rear seat, it's gotta be just the, the firmness of it. This is a very firm rear seat, so hopefully you enjoy firm rear seats if you sit back here often. Now coming up to the trunk of the Corolla Hybrid, there is a button under the lid, so you can just push that and it'll open right up. Now once inside, this is another pretty notable area for the Corolla Hybrid model because it's gonna come in at 13.1 cubic feet of space, which is actually identical to the regular gas-powered Corolla, so you're not sacrificing any cargo space for that hybrid model. Now as far as how that compares to the Insight, that's around the same figure. And as far as the finishings back here, we have a carpeting along the floor. If we lift it up, there is a spare tire up under there. And then it is also worth noting the seats do fold 60-40 split. You just have to do it from the uh, rear seat area. Now, as you would expect, the passenger seat is going to be manually adjusting. But if we lower this glove box, it is nicely dampened. And it's really, really large. So let's try out our coupons. We throw them in there. There is absolutely a ton of space. So you can be saving on gas and on food uh, in this Corolla Hybrid. And up top, we do have a sun visor with a light as well as a mirror, and it does also detach and have an extension in the end. Now, of course, as a hybrid, we can take off without the engine running, so I'll kind of give it a little test, see how gingerly I can get up to speed and <laughs> see how fast we can go on just the electric. Looks like that time is about 10 miles an hour. I have been higher than that. The battery's getting a little depleted right now, it looks like. But we'll try it out again, maybe a little later in the drive. And that was up to 55 miles per hour. Granted, we are going downhill, so we did cheat, <laughs> we did cheat a little bit, but... <laughs> Power is not too bad. Um, this is actually down a little bit from the regular gas powered yeah. Corolla, um, but I don't know that you're gonna really notice the difference. Um, it's not down too much, just about 18 horsepower, I think is what it said. Yeah. Um, so what our total system power here is gonna be 121 horsepower from a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. Um, added in with your nickel hydride battery pack and your electric motors that make up this whole hybrid system um, So it, it's definitely not gonna be a fast vehicle um, But you know, this is definitely fuel economy focused. Yeah. you don't expect it to be fast Yeah, th this segment of vehicle really none of them are fast. So you might as well be getting good fuel economy out of um, th This type of vehicle right and we just tested the Honda Insight not too long ago, which is a direct competitor to this and power feels just about the same. But yeah, not, not too bad on yeah. the acceleration front. Um, now you're probably noticing we have a continuously variable transmission on board with this hybrid. That is the same as most of the Corolla models. As you know, you have that kind of 
some of them have the traditional CVT, some have the one with the uh, fixed gear at the beginning. Um, but you know, in that regard, you're not going to notice a big difference from yeah. the gas powered model at all. And especially with the CVT under light accelerations, you're really not going to notice much of a difference from a regular transmission. Um, and now that we're up to speed, I do also want to talk about kind of the noise level entering into this cabin. So I'm going to get a, uh, a sound level reading before we slow down here. We're going around 50 miles per hour. Looks like we're hitting around 57 decibels, which that's good for this type of vehicle. Um, I do hear a little bit of wind noise, but it's pretty windy today. But really, other than that, you're not going to notice um, a lot of noise entering into this cabin, especially with this hybrid, you know, model. Yeah, that's one of the good benefits of getting the hybrid is that, for instance, setting still, coasting down hills, you know, low speed, you're actually not even listening to the motor. So. Um, you know, in that regard, you are gonna have less sound than the gas-powered Corolla. The other time we made it up to about 20 miles an hour. Like I said, if you're, you know, pretty light on the acceleration, uh, you can stay in the hybrid mode quite a bit, especially if you were like in traffic or something like that. Um, if you're not using the climate control, you can, stay in the just full electric mode for really a prolonged amount of time. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the air ball and slam dunk for the Corolla Hybrid. Um, so for our slam dunk, um, I'm gonna say it's gonna be the fuel economy, which I, I'm not gonna even spoil it for you. I'm gonna talk about this in about 60 seconds after we talk about the air ball, but the fuel economy for this vehicle is exceptional. Um, so stay tuned for those numbers. Um, but the air ball for this Corolla hybrid is gonna be the fact that Toyota only offers it in the LE trim level. Um, I find this a little bit interesting, especially for a, you know, a Corolla you know, model, People are looking to buy, you know, cheaper vehicles with more options in it, and I really don't see where this hybrid powertrain is going to be something that only the value-minded buyers are going to look for. You know, I they make they make a lot of different trims yeah. for the Corolla, so they already have those available. So it is a little bit weird that they don't, um, you know, roll that out to more trims, including, um, you know, its biggest rival, the Honda Insight, does offer several different trims, including a loaded model. touring. Yeah. Now, fuel economy, I know you're waiting for this, so I'll go ahead and read it to you. Um, this Corolla Hybrid is rated at 52 in the city, <clears throat> 53 on the highway, 52 combined. Um, <laughs> so 52 miles a gallon out of this sedan. It's really just phenomenal. I, it, it leaves you wondering why is there even a Prius existing, <laughs> you know, because this gets as good a gas mileage as that. It's 18 miles a gallon better than the uh, best version of the gas powered yeah Corolla. just let that sink 18. in let that sink in yeah. guys 18 miles per gallon above a regular corolla which frankly gets great fuel economy anyways um, so with a price tag that's not really much different at all from the standard corolla you're really yeah. you have a strong return on investment let's just put it that way um, well, this would be a good time for you to talk about the pricing. Yeah. So for this LE hybrid, um, it's going to start at $23,400. And if you're looking for the uh, price difference between a regular Corolla and that, that's around $3,100 uh, more than an LE. But keep in mind, with this hybrid, you are also getting more equipment than a traditional LE model. Um, so that is also part of that price difference. Now, as far as how this one's equipped, there's not really all that many options to add on, but we do have uh, floor liners for $249, and then the destination charge of $955 uh, brings this one's total to $24,604. So overall, I definitely think that the Curl Hybrid is a good choice if you're somebody who is very value conscious, if you're looking for a Corolla that doesn't have a ton of equipment, um, but really emphasizes value and gets exceptional fuel economy all while looking a lot more stylish than a Prius uh, This is definitely a good choice for you 
Well guys, that's it for this in-depth look at the 2021 Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Uh, we really appreciate you watching, and if you enjoyed this video, there's about four or 500 other ones on the channel, so be sure to check those out. Lots of content on this Corolla, as well as other stuff in the Toyota lineup. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.